My brothers and sisters in Christ, today's reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 14, presents us with the famous story of the beheading of St. John the Baptist, a story which has served as inspiration for a countless number of works of art throughout the centuries. And the reason why I think this story has been such an inspiration is because it paints a very lurid tale of human behavior. Uh, it, of course, includes vengeance, violence, politicking, but ultimately of, of sin. And its characters, whether it be Herodias, whether it be the daughter of Herodias, uh, usually known as Salome, even though her name's not given directly here in the scriptures, all of these characters give portraits of sin. Herodias wants vengeance. Salome uses her dance, which has usually been interpreted as a very sexually provocative dance to please the male guests at this party. So there's, there's sins here of vengeance, of, of lust, uh, of sexual impropriety, and ultimately of bloodshed, of murder and the death of John the Baptist. But the most interesting character is that of Herod the Tetrarch himself. Herod is known as a man of many vices. He's not a particularly good ruler. And in this case, he's throwing this party for his guests, for his court. And the dance of Salome presumably brings about, uh, you know, draws forth his passions. His lust is incited by what is done in his presence. And therefore, he makes an oath uh, to be appear overly generous. He promises her anything that she wants. Of course, he's making an oath he's not really prepared to back up. And so when Salome is complicit with the vengeful plot of her mother and asks for the death of John the Baptist, Herod gives in. He doesn't want to, but he's also afraid of looking bad in front of his guests and so he commits this sin of murder, of shedding the blood of an innocent holy man. Now, we're told that John was in prison because Herod was afraid that he would stir up the population to revolt. We're told that he had him imprisoned in order to silence him. We're not told he had any intention of killing John. In fact, the same story in the Gospel of St. Mark tells us that Herod liked to listen to John, that his words perplexed him but intrigued him, suggesting that John was bringing about a response in conscience from Herod in his preaching. And yet, all this goes by the wayside as Herod consents to his death. What does this tell us about the nature of sin? Ultimately, it's important to recognize that sin in our lives starts with little things, what we would call the venial sins in our lives that we all commit. And yet, sometimes we can become too comfortable with our venial sins. We can grow very comfortable and say, well, that's not so bad. And yet, the problem is when unchecked, even when unconfessed for too long, venial sins condition us. They dull our sensibilities against sin. And so, these unchecked sins snowball over time and condition us to commit graver and graver sins to the point where we can find ourselves in mortal sin, cut off from the very promise of God's love, forfeiting sanctifying grace within us. Now we hear a lot about conscience these days. St. Alphonsus Liguori, whose memorial we celebrate today, would be the first to tell us that while we must follow our conscience, it's also necessary that we inform that conscience. St. Alphonsus is not only doctor of the church, but he is also the patron of moral theologians. And he would tell us that it's important to study moral theology, know the teaching of the church, know God's commandments and law. If we don't, our conscience will be flawed and we may be led astray. Therefore, let us all commit on this memorial through the intercession of St. Alphonsus Liguori to know our faith, to know our morals, to always commit ourselves to choose the good so that the reign of God's mercy may always win out for us.